Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Jeff, and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic, and I think I got my audio set back. So this little dial right here is really easy to move, and my son gets to it every once in a while, and I don't know about that until I've spent like an hour recording, and then it's like, ah! And I also don't always know when I'm editing either because I, I, I hear it on my computer and already has bad sound, and I forget to use this because I usually have a headache at the end. Anyway, excuses, excuses. Sorry about the bad audio for the last couple. Hopefully today is better. I believe I tried everything out, and it sounded good to me from what I could hear. So hopefully it's good. Let me know in the comments below. All right. So here is the new deck. I wanted to build around temporary teleportation circle. So four mana enchantment at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one target artifact or creature you control, then return that card uh, to the battlefield under its control. So it's a blink effect at the end of every single turn. We've already seen this with Asa. We've already seen it with whatever, but it is also pretty nice to have that as a non-legendary effect that we get to have multiple of these teleportation circles out in the battlefield at the same time and blink multiple things and that is what we're trying to do with this deck we have lots of good etb effects here in this deck with yasharn esilika's chariot nadar skyclave apparition elite spellbinder prosperous innkeeper which will cause lots of other etb triggers for the life gain but also just creating treasures all the time fantastic spare supplies enters battlefield draws you cards also can pay two to sacrifices i realize that i keep forgetting about this card this is like the perfect card two mana card draw spell for for every deck uh just yeah remember that don Cler uh don bring your cleric just says a lot of things gains life uh destroy enchantments or exile cards from graveyard so useful in a lot of s situations but two i think is good there portable hole i think is really excited for because it can hit tokens and we can keep hitting tokens over and over again same type of thing with uh actually sky cleave apparition can't hit tokens so we need this one here uh and then jasper is sentinel which is sweet and then on the top end, we have just Urd, in which we'll create a legendary for one green cat token, but every once in a while that one might die. So we can all just blink it, do it again. Sweet stuff. And that's basically the idea of the deck. We're just going to try to keep bouncing stuff at the end of the turn, have another ETB effect out of all these creatures, and they're fantastic and great. And Nadar already being vigilant is pretty sweet too, but we can end up having a lot of venture triggers with this, a lot of just all of the things with this. And so that's the deck. Let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay, see how it does for us, and wish me luck. Here we go. I up against Aram and love the Prosperous Keepers. Keep that. Such a good card, man. This lets you keep two land in hands all day long if the if you can play it out. Yeah, it's not actually getting us another land. Yeah, it doesn't do a bunch of stuff, but being able to play a turn three play early and then wait an extra turn then because you've played something decent. Uh, to, then you have a couple more turns to try to draw the lands, which should let you get into okay shape as long as you're a decently cheap deck. And so I, I like it. I think it's a very, very powerful card. Obviously, it's seeing play everywhere. Um, yeah. All right, opponent. Arum, what you got? Play Forest, Pastor. Okay, in Keeper, pass the turn. Okay, Snow Covered Swamp. Uh, let's see what version of this. I Vecna, gotcha. Um, so Yasharn is a pretty good play here, just to get the lands, stop them from being able to sacrifice stuff. They can draw an extra card every every turn. Um, I, I we probably just get rid of this. The Book of Vial, the other one is more important to get rid of. The other thing too is like if they're trying to go for the Vecna combo. We could have, I, I, we probably should have just gone for Yasharn there. Yasharn is just a much more powerful hit. So next time we'll go Prosperous Innkeeper, Yasharn. We have the lands in hand. We don't need the treasures anymore. We'll be fine. And that should be good. Yeah, the, the Vecna combo is not a good combo. Book of All Darkness, fun, but also awful. All right, so Innkeeper... Yasharn, this only hits enchantments, not artifacts. Grab one of each. Swing in for three. Down to 14, pass the turn. Sweet. Uh, board wipe is going to be annoying. Gluttonous cube. K. Okay. That's actually really annoying. Hey, I like that. It's first. I always like when you see a card for the first time. It's like, yeah, I'm glad I put that in there. 
that's a good idea. All right, gelatinous cubes are annoying, though. But they also can't really block with it unless they have the ability to eat this. That will take up an entire turn. That means they won't have Faceless Haven. Okay, passes. Uh, play this before or after. I'm not sure if it matters too much. I guess hold on to more information. Um, swing, swing. From the tail side of my heart. We do have double strike. If a creature dies, we get the we get the counter onto it, equal to the difference. So up to a 4-4. Four, four. I like that. All right, so blood on the snow is a big possibility now. Um, I don't see why else they'd be playing snow except for Faceless Haven. It seems like a legitimate thing for them to play with Gelatinous Cube coming in later. Uh, so I think that we try to hold off now. We have enough for lethal on board uh, within at least a couple turns. Blood in the snow is bad. Okay. Brings back that Gelatinous Cube. And another dude. Yay. All right, uh, Nadar. Um, their deck actually hurts them quite a bit, so let's go ahead and just force them to lose life now. And pass the turn. Yeah, between uh, Book of All Darkness, uh, Eye of Vecna, like they're they have tons of stuff to make them lose life, and. Not, this is the issue I ran into at their deck is I wasn't able to actually have a ton of ways to not lose life. Okay, Nadar getting eaten up. Uh, I don't think I want to bring this in as a blocker. I guess actually, no, let's cancel. Yeah, I just passed the turn. If they have removal for the tokens here, it's a little bit annoying. Um, am I actually wanting to attack in with this? Maybe. So it takes four mana for them to get rid of Nadar, so they don't have it right now. But she's thirst, okay. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to bring this out in case they had some sort of removal. Uh, power word kill or whatever. I'd rather they do that at instant speed. Actually, I, I guess I don't, but whatever. Um, teleportation circle, come on. I believe in you. Okay, come on, Teleportation Circle. Yes! <laughs> the first time... Man, I think this is our first time we've drawn it, actually. Uh, first time playing it. <laughs> Yay. Um, let's see. Do we need to get rid of something from the graveyard? Not right now. Don't want to destroy our own enchantment. Uh, so let's just gain two life. And blink the artifact. Let's just share it. Make another two cats and pass the turn. Two cats every turn. Legit. Potentially three if we're attacking in. I like that. So the only answers they'll have for this combo for us is. Uh, what's it called? Um, the feed the swarm can destroy enchantments. I don't think black can destroy any artifacts at all. At least not in standard 2022. Ah, there it is. That would do it. Lifelink. Annoying. All right, block. Yeah, Poet's Quill actually very annoying here. That is probably the best way to gain life with this deck. 
is gelatinous cubes in Poet's Quill, and we need to draw something other than lands. So teleportation is a little bit awkward when we don't have lots of creatures, lots of things to be blinking. And so if they get rid of Eska's Chariot here, which is their best thing to get rid of, it's actually pretty annoying for us. Um, we'll see if they try to go for teleportation circle instead. But yeah, they should exile this. We get to draw a card, which is nice at least. Okay. That's an extra draw every turn. Is this better than three the three mana dwarf? Um, I think I think so. With everything else we have in our deck, I think it is for sure. Okay, block everything. They gain more life. Game slows down a little bit more. They're top decking. They didn't get rid of our teleportation circle with the one real good shot that they had to do so. And now we're in fantastic shape. Okay, draw a card. I should have played Yusharn first. What was I thinking? Thin the deck a little bit there. Get rid of all the planes and uh, forests. Uh, play out one of them. Doesn't really matter. Hopefully we'll find Lair of the Hydra again soon too. Um, now, I guess we attack in. Any chance we have to get their life total lower, it's better for us. Uh, draw Card draw for now. Yasharn does draw us two cards, but two cards of things we don't want. Ah, more lands. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. Finds a land. Can turn on Faceless Haven. Can equip, quote, Poet's Quill. Um, we will trade off a of Faceless Haven here for sure. That's like the only other what if threat that's actually really annoying to us. They lose their chance of really getting a large amount of life link until they find another one. They're up above their starting life total though. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Spellbinder. All right, well, play that out. Do not sacrifice this. We want to draw more cards. Although finding something really good right now would be huge. And we can still at least gain some life. Sure. Here we go. Let's do it. Portable hole. Uh, I think we get rid of get rid of poet's quill, right? Um. Actually, we get rid of the token, and then with teleportation circle, we get rid of the quill. There it is. Yes. <laughs> That is the whole point of Teleportation Circle. I like it. Valkyrie, okay. Sacrifice creature, each opponent sacrifices creature has lifelink and hexproof from planeswalkers. All right, go to combat. We're willing to trade off. They had another one. More lands, because, you know, we got them, so... Yay. Uh, we already have a blocker, but they can get rid of that and gain more life, so I guess we go ahead and bounce this again. Pass the turn. And I'd love to be able to get a couple more teleportation circles and more good things to target. I just want all of my deck, okay, guys? That's all I want. No Priest of Oblivion with Kicker brings back Gelatinous Cube. All right, so that's good that we got an extra one. So now we can make sure we get rid of Valkyrie. Um, yep. So they can sacrifice No Priest of Oblivion to get rid of Dawnbringer. Nice. That is such a good draw. And then we have the portable hole to get rid of tokens over and over and over again. And we can keep bouncing so we have apparitions. So yeah, this is fantastic. Um, so swing in now. If they want to gain the two life, that's fine. So 
So... Let them have a 4-4 four, four for now. Yeah, that's fine. I don't really care about the Book of Darkness, actually. This is a long game. I really like it. <laughs> Hand of Ekna. Okay. Equips it onto... Doesn't equip it onto anything. I guess... They don't have many cards in hand, doesn't really matter. No blocks, we're fine with that. There's Lair of the Hydra. Decent. Okay, attack in for six. So we let them have Poet's Quill, but they won't be able to have anything with haste, right? So let's see. I go to end step, blink, portable hole, get rid of the token. If they find an Eye of Vecna, they can get a token. But again, they have a token and we have portable hole to get rid of it for forever. Oh, they get to learn again, though. Oops. Right. Poet's Quill does have an effect. That was a misplay. Right. I forgot about the ETV effect with Poet's Quill. It's okay if it isn't able to keep making like keep hitting the tokens for us. It's not as useful. So I think just going back and forth between hidden skyclave apparition onto their pieces uh, and whatever else, we're good to go. If they they have a lot of dead cards they're drawing. I'm assuming they're playing four ofs of each of these. Wow. Another gelatinous cube. Yay for you, sir. Cool. All right, play out Nadar. So we can't we can't discard a card, so we lose two life. That's fine. Um, five, eight. Make an eight eight. They can block with everything to kill Lair of the Hydra. We could have a blocker. Do we need to get rid of Poet's Quill so I don't get more life? Okay. Create an 8-8. Attack, attack. Chumps. All right, so. Portable hole. Get rid of Poet's Quill. No lifelink. We should be able to win if they don't have lifelink. Pass the turn. So they get it four, four, three with menace. We could trade off just to get rid of more lifelink. Um, how useful is Nadar here? It does feel a little bit like they're going to be playing blood in the snow. So they want this in the graveyard, doesn't it? Um, in which case we do go ahead and trade off. I 
I guess getting rid of the gelatinous key would have been better to get the Skyclave Apparition. They had the mana to then exile it in response. Spellbinder. Okay, he doesn't get rid of the Lair of the Hydra now, which is nice. They should have just let that go to the graveyard. Uh, and then we, we they would have gotten rid of this, because this is really their big threat now, is the Lair of the Hydra. All right, so uh, eight again, I believe. Yes. Uh, they're going to chump here, so might as well get in for one. Oh, wait, face the saving, right. Oops. I'm making a lot of mistakes. It's okay. What did you guys expect? <laughs> Dang it. Man, I, we found a lot of land so far in the top of our deck. I guess it's actually, this is 12. It's fine. 13. Doesn't kill Dombrian Claret with Faceless Haven. It actually is kind of interesting. Uh, I think that is our best thing to try to snag up here. Um, yeah, so Dombringer Cleric. Um, let's actually see the graveyard. No Priest of Oblivions can come back. Uh, all right, so... Exos Heart card from Graveyard. They, they might have more Blood in the Snow, so we get rid of this. We should be winning the long game in this matchup. Um... But it's going to be a really long game, unfortunately. Anytime they keep something in hand is a good chance that it's a way to kill a uh, Lair of the Hydra. We have another one, uh, so we still just try to go aggressive here. Draw a card. Draw a card. Um, eight again. Okay, so they can double block the Hydra here if they want to with Faceless Haven and Cube. Um, I'm still okay with that. I, I think that is their best play still, though. So yeah, they go for that. We get rid of two good creatures. Uh, I'll get rid of Faceless Haven first. Okay, it looks like that's not a power word kill or removal spell. Um, would I rather make sure I know what's in their hand? They still get to play. It just costs you more or keep getting more card advantage. More card advantage is the answer. Yasharn, awesome. Pass the turn. There's Aya Vecna. Draws card down to seven. Not utilizing this, huh? Is it instant speed? Okay, Yasharn. Which actually does stop. No, it exiles them. It doesn't sacrifice. So they don't have to. Or does it only cost spells? Can't cast spells of those types. Okay. More lands. Yay. Okay. Eska's Chariot. They're due for another Blood in the Snow anytime soon.
But we can't sacrifice these now because of Yasharn. Right. Um, swing in. Life total is pretty low now. Okay, pass the turn. They are going to wait for us to actually have our own target for something here. Um, yeah, draw more cards. More cats actually probably would be the right way to go. Um, so yeah, maybe we should have gone for more Esca Chariot triggers. That's a good draw. Pass the turn. I love how it took me... Uh, <laughs> What is it? 38 cards to find two teleportation circles. I haven't had the hardest time in the world finding these. I don't know what's going on, but it's not fun. Doesn't have flying, indestructible. When it enters battlefield, lose two life, down to two. Is it whenever it attacks as well? They're down to two. <laughs> Was that actually worth it? I don't know, but uh, what else does it say? Uh, if you lost two or more life, go down to, yeah. So th this is the other thing about this is that like Vecna is not that good. <laughs> like there's a lot more things that it wish that it had to make it better. It, it should have like hex proof and indestructible so that the only way where if you have bounce all things or exile or whatever that kind of stuff, which there's lots of those things out there, you have an answer for it. But it should be powerful enough that it's hard to deal with. I think there should be a lot more things with Indestructible and Hexproof if they're this difficult to make happen. All the other cards on this are not... All the other effects on that are not good enough. Uh, up to an 11-11. Yay! We'll even take it just to, just to show that we can. Valkyrie is annoying. Means we have to deal, go through life gain as well. Which means we're going to have to probably wait another extra turn or two. Yay. Oh, yeah. Man. They've been drawing a lot of action. A lot of stuff. Not that many lands for how far they've gone through their deck. Okay, pass to my turn. We need to stop drawing lands very, very badly. Man, this is annoying. They just drew the two like perfect cards to stop the situation like now now it's prolonged even longer and we might actually draw out before <laughs> before we kill them that's the biggest downside here so we get some triggers we get to blink Eska's chariot and we get to blink so we can't actually target Eska's chariot twice by the way they both trigger at the same time which means they have to target something as they go on the stack i could have gotten rid of uh use portable hold to get rid of that uh vecna but not worthwhile here um pass the turn yeah, with, with 21 turns, I guess we have 10 because we keep doing supplies. We should have enough creatures on here that we can outpace this. Um, yeah, I would love to see things that have indestructible and hexproof. It would be insanely difficult to deal with. But there are answers. There's been enough answers printed with negative effects, with exiling effects, with uh, bounce things, especially tokens that are indestructible and hexproof, I think would actually be kind of cool. Okay, down to 15, back up to six, only three blockers they block. Uh, so if we can find something to turn on uh, SS Chariot, we we should win. Hey, Faceless Haven, so four. Hmm. Prosperous and Keeper, well, that lets us go a little bit longer. <clears throat> They're not going to outpace us. That's for dang sure. <laughs> we, we should be able to be just fine here. Uh, unless we don't block. So. 
six attackers. Um, if three get through, that's five damage. Yeah, we wait one more turn. Let them keep finding more ways to do stuff. Only four gets through, or two gets through anyway. All right, so... No attacks. This is Chariot. Um, just gain more life, maybe, instead of anything else. Like, maybe we stop drawing cards so they don't would us, uh, beat us from that too quickly. We'll, we'll draw one card. Stronghold's not bad. Um... Yeah, gain life. All right, back up to 20. Lots of creatures on board. Seems legit. They're going to go up to 10, though. Pass the turn. Dissolves, cool. And they have made this game go on so long. Down to four. Dude, this is this is a crazy, crazy long game. Hand of Ekna. Sorry, I said Vesna in my first video, by the way, of this one, and everyone got really angry at me. I, I believe I've said Vecna every time now. Uh, I'm doing better. It's Vecna. Oh, right. Youch. Hits are five now. Doesn't have a way to draw a card yet. Dude, they've drawn so much action. Concerted Prosperous Innkeeper. Sure. I want to draw action. Like, we've drawn our entire deck. Why don't we have anything other than lands? These last 10 cards are ridiculous. Yeah, they decided not to gain more life and play that beforehand. Not a very smart play. Yo. Yeah, having it up for a blocker is actually a really good play here. How did they lose life? Oh, they paid life to equip it to get the two. All right, Skyclave Apparition. Um, so get rid of Gelatinous Cube. Stronghold, have some life gain for the next turns. Um... Are we okay with them having more 4-4 four, four creatures? I don't want them to have the Hand of Vecna. I don't want them to have a, a way to gain more life. Um, yeah, let's wait one more turn. No attacks. Pass my turn. Or pass the turn, so... Let's draw some more cards. Okay, they're targeting that one. Target this one. Apparition. We do have to worry about how many cards we're drawing. Oh my goodness, how are we still drawing more lands? I mean, I know that we still have more lands in our deck, but it's literally all of our action in the bottom, like, 10 cards. How many lands is this? First off, 
one land in the graveyard. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, 15, 19, 20. All right, so we have four more lands in the bottom 15 cards. Yay. I mean, I know Yasharn has helped us get that many lands, but that also should mean that. Mm, yep, it's okay. That still is a ridiculous amount of not action that we have drawn. So they do attack in now. Good call. How do they keep losing life? It's only when it enters the battlefield they draw a card and lose. What do they do to lose life that turn? Did I miss it? Don't they have to lose life for this to work? Why are they making zombies? What the crap? Dude, why are they making zombies? I don't understand it. They did not lose life. Wait, wait no, they, they did somehow. Did they draw an extra card? Oh, it has the rest of the text. I'm not looking at all of the text there. Yeah, there's more text down there. They can pay two life, pay two mana and two life or whatever it is. Okay, more lands. So happy about that. Um, I can use Bertrigard to gain us a little bit more life, put a little bit of pressure on, maybe attack in once this turn, have enough life that we can take an attack for them on the next turn. I think that we, we pass. Yeah, so no attacks. Pass one more time. Um, let's go ahead and go for a Skyclave Apparition. We need to get rid of the Book of the Vecna. The Book of Elf Darkness, I mean. They have, might have removal here. If I didn't want them to have the, uh, the Poet's Quill every turn, I would say just we can just keep blinking this, but we have another... We have another portable hole that we should be able to find soon. Let's do that. Life would be great. And then we can just start getting rid of these tokens every turn. That'd be fantastic. Power word kill. Okay. Dude, if we lose this one, it's going to be so annoying. So so I, I was wrong. Vecna is the reason why they are able to keep drawing cards, losing life, and creating two zombies. The junk is going on. Why can't we draw anything but lands? There are only... How many lands now? Did I draw two more lands since I counted here? Like, the odds of us drawing lands are so small. Maybe I should just be drawing more right away so we can get action out before we stop drawing cards for the next couple turns. I don't want to overdo our card draw, though. Hand of Ekna. That's actually very, very annoying because of this Eradicator Valkyrie. Clips 2. Yep. I mean, our life total doesn't matter, but their life total really very much does right now. And so... Ugh. Oh, man. Okay. Something to play. Oh, this is only Hexproof from Playing Walkers. I just... I could have gotten that instead of Gelatinous Cube the other time. I didn't even realize. I was just thinking it was Hexproof. Hexproof from Planeswalkers. They bold the Hexproof symbol because it's a key word, and so I just see only the Hexproof part of it. It's really dumb. Um, 
get rid of this guy. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. Because I'm a doofus, I know. Why are they doing that? Okay. I believe it still exiles the Valkyrie, though. They just don't get the token now. Yeah. The worst possible time for them to have done that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they ha don't have the ability to gain life anymore. That means that they are going to keep making zombies. They're going to be taking two points of damage every turn. They have uh, seven zombies. We have eight cats. Um, we can make another one. So, yeah, we need to find more action for another couple turns. Uh, the Betrigard Stronghold is actually not the worst to kind of change up the calculations here a little bit, but it's also not amazing. All right, so draw two and SS Chariot. Try to find that other portable hole. Dawnbringer Cleric, yay. <laughs> All right, a good card. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Pass. That is a very good one. If we can finish a thing hidden with all these creatures with a buff on all of them, we have a much higher chance of winning. And this forces them to either sacrifice or lose life. Dude, this has just been ridiculous the entire way through. Uh, best draw here is a portable hole to get rid of creatures. Sure. Okay, 10 cards left. We have to be really careful about how we draw now. I don't think I'm going to draw any extra cards. We're just going to hopefully not find the last land on this next turn. Okay, pass to my turn. I mean, it's more card draw. A okay, plain Adar. That doesn't die to power word kill. I believe they've used all their gelatinous cubes now. We can sacrifice a land all day long. Uh, get rid of a land. Got rid of that. That's actually a really big thing for them to get rid of. They must have another one. Um, all right, so next time we get a 4-4 four, four god. Dawnbringer Cleric. Can I draw another card? Oh, I don't know. Okay, we're going to exile something from the graveyard. Whatever it is. Draw in this cube. Yeah, that goes away. Uh, play more stuff this turn. Win faster, right? Okay. Last time drawing. That gives us eight cards, eight turns to win. We should be able to do that. Especially with more chariots. Probably should have attacked in first, got the extra one, and then had that as an extra after they blocked. Um, yeah, a little bit of a mistake there. Oh, that's, I chose which one I kept. Oh, well. Okay, so if you attack in with 10 cats, we wait one more turn with Nadar. We, we just have to. Okay, one more turn. Although, if they have removal for Nadar, it becomes really, really annoying. No attacks. Pass the turn. Blink Nadar. Blink Eska's Chariot. Blink... Uh, 
Don bring a cleric, whatever. Uh, yeah, Don bring a cleric. All right, stop drawing cards. Eight turns. We should be able to win with what's on board. Get rid of all creatures in here, just in case I find another Null Priest or Blood in the Snow or whatever. Okay, Nadar. Dude, we've gained a ton of life, at least. All right, it's getting to the point where it's starting to be really loud. All right. Come on. We got this. Next turn. Watch him have blood in the snow now. Oh, gosh. Please don't have blood in the snow now. And then Vecna will be able to survive as well. Oh, no. And then they'll have Faceless Havens with Poet's Cool if we get rid of this. Book of All Darkness. So they did have another one. As anticipated. So if they play Blood in the Snow, uh, for the love. We should have one more of those ready to go soon. I believe. Nadar. Yeah, one more. Could be the top deck. Okay. They can only bring up one Faceless Haven. Jesper is Sentinel. I think we go aggro now. Because they're down pretty low in life. We have the Stronghold. So if we make these five fives, one of them survives. But we already know those ones are the ones that are getting blocked anyway. So we need to get... Um, let's, let's, let's actually think this through. So 14, they have 9, 10, 11. So I think this is lethal. If we get counters onto... These guys. Never make Esoteric into a creature. I'd rather, we just need to make sure we can keep blinking it back over and over again. Attack all in. Paceless Haven becomes a blocker. I haven't done the math fully, but I believe that this gets them down to negative two. So. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or yeah, it's close. All I know is they're not going to be able to kill us, and they won't be able to kill enough stuff that their stuff doesn't die. We created enough other creatures that have two power. I probably should have put onto the Dombrian Clarice. They were harder to block, but whatever. Oh, yes, mess up, please. Okay. Yeah, I think we just get there. There's no lifelink, right? So five, six damage is getting through right now. And they just let a little bit more through. Oh my goodness. So I was it was six damage. That was negative one. They they accidentally blocked wrong, so negative three, but Goodness gracious, what a game. We got there. I made some mistakes um, where we probably could have won quicker, but the ridiculousness of only having four lands in 15 cards, and we drew like three of those before we found any other action. Goodness, that was annoying. All right, up against Friend USA, and we're on the play. We do have a good turn two play into some good stuff. So we'll go ahead and keep this. Typically, I like to have a creature for turn two, but we'll try this out. Pass the turn. We are really heavy in the three drop slot. Uh, so yeah, there's a Sentinel. 
cool. I think that the sensitivity on my mouse got turned up and I feel like it's really awkward now. Um, I don't know why, but like it's just like a, a slight difference off from what I normally do. And it's really, really bothering me. <laughs> do you guys have the same kind of issue? Like everyone saw things just change. Uh oh, elves. Elves are bad. Another one drop. Another one drop. Nice. Good stuff there, sir. All right, I can get out the stronghold pretty soon, and then Eska's Chariot might be a better thing to play quickly. Uh, Sp Spellbinder is nice here. They already have reach creatures, though. This is something we want to kill. I think that we go for Stronghold and Innkeeper. I'd rather start getting out the Eska's Chariot. We have a blocker now for Avenger, unless they have a uh, another Elf Lord. We could have Tyver Kell. There's the Lord. Yikes. Didn't tap down the Sentinel. Interesting. I figured they would have uh, gone in with a four power there. Okay, down to 18. Pass to my turn. Prosperous Innkeeper. Okay, so let's go Chariot. And get to gain some life back. Not too shabby. Pass the turn. And, man, yeah, elves are going to be a little bit more difficult for us. We really need to find Skyclave Apparition. We also need to find, I guess, more lands for that. Teleportation Circle would be a fantastic draw here as well. So just, you know, more, more things. Another cannon can be Tactician. Yeah, our, our uh, Skyclave Apparitions are absolutely our best draws here. Heraldy Knights to Elves taps everything down. Okay. And a blocker for Chariot now. Yikes. Yep, that's bad. Well, we have all of the Prosperous Innkeepers. So, honestly, at this point, with the only one card left in hand, it is the best thing for us to play just because we'll gain lots of life. And gaining life is actually a good thing for us to do. Um, Pono says good game. I can play out Spellbinder, swinging with Chariot, make an extra copy of a cat, gain a ton of life here. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Get rid of whatever is in hand for an extra turn. If we're not using your treasures, it's not very good. Get rid of Crippling Fear for an extra turn. Kind of. Um... We'll go ahead and trade off with this because it actually makes Sentinels a little bit worse, although they get to draw an extra card out of that. Um, yeah, pass the turn. Yeah, Crippling Fear on that turn would have been brutal. They still have the ability to do it with Sentinels. Oh, that's right. These guys add mana too. That's right. It's a lot of green mana. Well then, <laughs> we're done for. Sounds good. We're out of there. Youch. Up against Buckshot, and again with a turn two spare, su spare supplies. I think we actually keep this. Looks decent. On the draw, hopefully we can find a Jasper Sentinel. Although I would like to get out this uh, Stronghold quickly. We pass the turn. Shambling Ghast. Really deciding if they want to play out a land there. Okay, down to 19. I twitch. Uh, Yasharn is going to be awesome in this matchup. We do have to get up to it quicklier. All right, Skyclave Apparition also be decent here. We can get rid of Shambling Gas without it getting any effect. Or I twitch. So I, I'm noticing with Standard 2022 that there really isn't a good red deck. There's the Goblin deck, which is pretty decent. Uh, and I think that actually can probably be the red deck right now as Goblins. But it is kind of weird. I actually kind of like the format not having to deal with them on a red deck. But everything that has a Binding of Gods in it or all of these different, like, there's a lot of really good effects that are out there 
that you get to see a lot of because they don't have to deal with red. All right, so get rid of Paladin and... I definitely want to get up to Yasharn. So it's either Spellbinder or the other Paladin, because I think we want the Apparition. So I, I think Spellbinder, we're not going to be playing anytime soon. Or I feel like I'd rather have Nadar for later. Well, now we probably should have kept one of those, but that's fine. Um, get rid of their ability to learn stuff. They will have the ability to kill a teleportation circle, which is something we don't want. So let's get rid of Eye Twitch. Pass the turn. So yeah, your shard says a players can't pay life or sacrifice non land permits to cast spells or activate abilities. So Plum the Forbidden and well, Plum the Forbidden can still sac uh, cast its first one. This can't sacrifice anything else. No blocks here. Could have gotten rid of both these guys. Left them with just a 1-1. One -one. But if they're looking for the treasure for the skeleton thing here, Ana. Binding. Okay. Really gets rid of this. Intriguing. Um, so we know the skeleton thing is coming out here. Let's go for Yasharn. I just want to get that out on the battlefield. Um, I, I think that just getting the Binding Old Gods here, just stopping it from ramp now doesn't help us a whole lot. So no reason to bring that out. Uh, choose one of each, right? So submit two. Swing in. Down to 18. I actually hadn't read this in a long time. I couldn't remember if it was both. Yeah, so what is the battlefield? Search your library for a basic forest card and a basic planes card. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle. I know cards just instinctively because I played against them a lot, a lot of times that at some point I forget to actually that I need to like reread stuff. Like, oh yeah, I gotta do that. All right, so play out planes. Um, apparition on one of these guys isn't the worst play. Even trading off now wouldn't be the worst either. Uh, did they just play this tapped or did they just played out of one drop? They played it tapped. All right, so most likely skeletons are coming on the next turn. That's my assumption. The dark could be really nice just to give the buff on us quicker. But let's go ahead and get rid of get rid of one of these guys. Doesn't really matter which one. Um, only until the end of turn. So let's just swing in with this now. They could have double blocked and killed the Asharn. This way they can block at a treasure. And that's fine. Uh, if they have Crippling Fear, Yasharn is better here. Shadow's Verdict would be annoying, but at least we got stopped them from having as many death triggers. Actually, wait. Shadow's Verdict wouldn't cause death triggers. Right. Blood in the snow. That's rude. They get a shambling gas back and a bunch of dudes. All right, Sentinel, Nadar. We're going to put out the stronghold onto this next turn if we don't, if we keep drawing nothing. Um, let's go Lost Mine of Fendeller. Another apparition. I mean, having some sort of interaction removal always seems good to me, so we'll keep it on top. I'm not sure how good it is in this matchup, but it's it's still a thing that we can play. I'm more worried about Lolfs and uh, Liliana's at this point. There it is. Yeah, that's the thing I was worried about. I will show you what happens when the yeah. The one. Hmm, that's a lot of damage. So, you can put... How much mana does this take, actually? So, one, two, three. And tap this. And I can still play out Apparition. Hmm. Does that actually help us? We can get rid of Shambling Gas. We can put counters onto everything else. They trade off with this. They can't double kill uh, Jasper Central. They block with one. We get rid of both these guys. One there. And Loth gets a ton of loyalty back. They kill Nadar. Um, we get to gain a lot of life and get a trigger here. What what trigger can we get here? Get another goblin. It's kind of our only play, so we're going to go for it. I'm not sure if it actually sets us up better, but I don't, I don't think that doing nothing sets us up any better than this, you know? So we're going to try for this. 
Uh, it, it's not the worst of all plays I've ever heard of. They might sacrifice now upon the Forbidden. Or, yeah, Deadly Dispute, K. Okay. Makes a treasure. Okay, let's go and activate this. Counter here, counter there. Uh, Vigilance and lifelink. Let's go ahead and attack in. Create a goblin. So yeah, blocks are double block here to the Nadar. One block on a Sentinel. We get rid of three of their creatures. We had to keep one of ours. Gain six life. L Loth, if... Everything would be great there if Loth didn't also get three loyalty here. But even so, I think it's the best thing we can do. And we will slay our enemies. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, they're drawing very well. We've drawn nine lands. <laughs> so actually, some of those are from Nadar or Yasharn, so it's fine. I think it's just in general bad matchup. We have lots of answers for anything that's for Chromatic Cost or less. Everything else is difficult for us to deal with. Portable Hole is really nice. We've been wanting that. So. Yeah, how do we actually win this? If we find a teleportation circle, we can get to a pretty cool place. So yeah, they trade off with the apparition. They block their... Loth gains two loyalty, loses one, so they can't actually make spiders next turn without losing it. Skeletons are going to get in trouble, are going to be an issue here for us. Uh, we do have uh, the guy that enters the battlefield and destroys enchantments. I forgot about that. We might need more of those just for how many skeleton decks I run into every day. And they had another Loth. Okay, that's that's game. Let's just see if teleportation circles on top and then we'll concede. Nadar. Hmm. Yeah. We can put a counter onto Sentinel. Which means they have to double block to be able to trade off. Loth gets enough counter. Yeah, we're we're done. Alright, concede. Goodbye. Alright, up against Rich and not a good enough hand. Much better. Dawnbringer Cleric. This is the one we need for getting rid of skeletons. So keep this hand. We will drop him, though. I think I'd rather get up to a turn three Eska's Chariot and then Nadar. So, yeah, we'll keep this. Yeah, Nadar to be able to tap down for Eska's Chariot. Seems legit. So we'll play out planes, pass the turn. There definitely is a downside for the the um, non whatever colors don't have the snarls in them right now. It's kind of a bad deal. Okay, Prosperous Innkeeper. Angels. Oh, man. Angels Tribal is actually pretty dang good in this format. I don't, I don't know if anyone's... I've not seen that played very much, but it's legit. Okay, no more life gain. It's actually a little bit annoying. Oh... It's the first two, right? So yeah, play this out. Play chariot. Create some dudes. Pass the turn. Double Nadar. Man, I just love how I consistently draw bad draws. Creates a four-four angel. Can tap to destroy a creature with power less than this creature. So we actually want to trade off with this guy pretty soon. Uh, passing my turn. Lara Hydra. Nadar. Um. Sure. Land to the bottom. Alright, so this gets that ability on the next turn, which means it kills the Nadar. And so in order to save Nadar, we're going to go ahead and swing in. 
Uh, Angels get double strike is actually really terrible too for us. So I, I would rather trade off here with Eska's Chariot and get at least a, an extra dude out on the battlefield. So swing in, create a copy. So yeah, they realize that we're willing to trade off. Uh, so ultimately that's just the best play for us regardless of what happened. I just wanted to make sure of that. So they have... Vigilance on this one. This one does not have Vigilance. Cosmos Elixir. Okay. Tax in for four. It's only uh, less than this creature, so they should be attacking with Valkyrie as well. Yeah, it kills Nadar now. Cool. Double Strike here is the bad part. If we had Prosperous Innkeeper still, we might be in okay shape, but I don't know about that now. All right, so first off, uh, spare supplies. Hey, man, we're drawing a lot of lands. Okay, another. Create a goblin, I guess. How much damage are we taking right now? If this gets any bigger, it's a lot. Eight, ten... So yeah, if this gets, if they have two more angels, we are dead. So tap here, tap here. Go as aggressive as we can. Man, yeah, Prosperous Innkeeper would be so nice right now. Down to 10. This unfortunately has Vigilance as well, so we can still block. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's game. OK, then sounds sounds good. I have against evil Pelu and we finally found a teleportation circle and I'm not sure if we can keep this hand. Um, two lands, kind of some ramp we will keep it. Kind of works ish. So throw this out. Sentinel past the turn. We've hit lands a lot the last few games which probably means we're due for a, a game where we don't have lands portable hole yay uh what enchantments do i think i'll be able to hit with this we can hit whatever we need to with apparition so we'll just gain some life right now i guess get out a creature we we hopefully can get up to teleportation circle and bounce this that's the other hope all right as far as bad draw goes, it's not a land. That's the best of them. So if we hit the land now, we have Teleportation Circle. We can keep getting extra treasures. Get up to Yasharn quicklier. Now that goes away. Dang it. Oh, I really wanted that Teleportation Circle. All right, let's go Yasharn. Get our lands. Uh, forest, and we typically just need more planes in general, so let's go forest and planes. Oh, that's all we can do with this, right? Uh, swing in. Down to 17, past the turn. This might be a mirror match with Teleportation Circle. Nope, it's Clerics, okay. Actually, wait, why aren't we playing this card? I need to be playing this card. It's a great card. Uh, Portable Hole lets us get rid of this. Um... Play out planes. Play out. Apparition, get rid of spell binders so we can attack in a bit more aggressively. And then portable hole, get rid of portable hole. Uh, let's see if they want to trade off with Innkeeper. I think it is worthwhile for them to do so. Down to 13, past the turn. Eska's Chariot. Yeah, this might be a mirror match. We have Teleportation Circle on the next turn now. I can play it this turn, or I can play out Double Spellbinder. Let's, let's take a peek at this hand. This also is six power in the air, which is a really big deal right now. Okay, they have their own teleportation circle and lots of Eskis chariots. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, 
Tap down Skyclave Apparition. Um, I guess one of the Professor's Symbologies. We really just wanted the, the ability to have tons of power here. Um, what won't they be able to play on this next turn? I guess if we just make a two drop thing cost four, it makes it a lot harder to ever want to cast it. Um, we can swing out the Ashar and double and trade off here. We have Spellbinder and Cleric to trade to block then. They have the Chariots to go with. Um, I want to keep these guys for attacking. So no attacks, pass the turn. I'd rather be chumping and getting in for six damage every turn. Opponent scoops it up. Sweet. Yeah, because they know that we have Teleportation Circle online for the next turn. If they didn't find the land there, we do over just outpace them with the Elite Spellbinders. Having our life total up already. Uh, good stuff. Nice. All right, so there you guys have it with Teleporters and uh, in Saturday 2022. 2022 and teleportation circle is an awesome card i think there's a lot of really good cards to be hitting s's chariot is awesome spare supplies i liked although yashar and spare supplies was kind of a non-bow uh there is the three mana dwarf that enters and gains you life but i i do want more two drops in the deck so i liked it dumb cleric was bad in a lot of decks but i think it'll be great against the skeletons deck and so i think you do definitely play it um do you need more copies to make sure you have it? I don't know. That's kind of an awkward, an awkward thing there. Maybe just hold on to it if you find it in hand. Uh, Sentinel, we didn't really get to see too often, but it's decent. Portable hole against lots of tokens, which is nice. Uh, everything about this deck I actually really, really liked. Like every every piece, every card in here was great, uh, except for we didn't really have anything to deal with anything that's over four toughness for for chromatic cost. And so we need something else that was with four chromatic cost. Dawnbring cleric gets rid of the skeleton land but we don't have any answers for both or liliana and the question is, is is that okay and honestly in the format i think yes i think that we only lose to the control decks there's the liliana and loth and coma those are the three cards that are really difficult for us to deal with and i think that to an extent we can outpace each of those to an extent um it's close even coma can tap down Eska's Chariot to not be able to activate, but it it only stops activated abilities from happening. So Teleportation Circle will keep being able to blink and we'll make two cats for every, for and they make two of their guys as well. So I guess it's not quite comparable there, but we should be able to just make a big enough board that we can counteract, interact with them a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's in between. So overall, the deck is good. I think it is powerful. I think it's going to be really good against every deck that's not those the high-end control stuff are we aggressive enough to beat those decks i think some of the times but we're probably like 40 percent against those matchups and like 60 percent against everything else which is still a decent deck you know and so anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one thank you guys so much and bye-bye